Am I running too slow? I doubt it. If anything, you're running too fast more than you're running too slow. Over the years, I've dealt with hundreds of runners and I've only met two or three that have legitimately been training too slowly. Everyone keeps thinking your performance, you know, your your outcome generated finishing time comes from the hard workouts. But in actual fact, your finishing time has nothing to do with how fast you can do five by one minute because running longer than 60 minutes requires the ability, ability to maximally utilize your fats, spare carbohydrates, buffer the, dis, list the acidity of lactate production, maintain maximal running economy for the duration at the event. At no point, like when we're talking about running over 60 minutes, over an hour, are you actually required to run fast. So your aerobic system contributes 98% of the energy required to run or do anything consistently, constantly for an hour or more. So therefore, your most significant potential to get faster lies in developing your aerobic system, the system that is generating the energy aerobically for muscular contractions, not so much your anaerobic system or your even contractile capacity, which is typically what we'd work on when we're working on a speed-based program. So I see runners making this as one of the biggest mistakes. So thinking they need to run fast to get fast. And that's actually why I've built the Reignite Your Running program. So it's utilizing my ABCs framework, that's aerobic base, consistency, and specificity, along with like endless amounts of resources that you can implement over a six-month program. So it's not really a course, it's like a six-month program that you get one year access to. So don't feel, you know, so you don't feel obliged to go all in right from the get-go. But as I want to get you, so this is what I'm I'm just so passionate about making runners faster and get better consistency within their training so they they can develop a program and a roadmap, what I call a runner's roadmap, to reproducible success within their running. So I want you to get to the finish line and think, that was it. That was what I wanted. Sure, some things aren't going to go well. It never does. But Overall, I want you to have a finish line experience that you are proud of, rather than the majority of you thinking, oh, I could have prepared better. <laughs> I could have paced it better. I could have just done everything slightly better because I really didn't know what I was doing or how I should do it or when I should do it. So I've, with my Reignite Your Running course program, I've eliminated all that resources, calculators, finishing time calculators, nutrition-based calculators, base phase through to race phase, um, training workouts, training zones, calculators, in terms of checking your zones and thresholds, everything. And so just pre-Christmas, like 2022, if you're listening now, jump on, okay, and I will onboard you personally with your first three months. So my time's getting pretty limited, so I'm only going to do this you know, for a handful of you uh, pre-Christmas. Okay, So you want to get your, yourself sorted over the holiday season, jump on, and uh, I, will, I will sort that out for you. But that's something that um, people also say, well, you need to sell yourself more. So I'm doing that, right? I am standing by this program because just over the weekend, I had three dudes coming in from injury, completing trail, half marathon road, and ultra marathon way beyond the expectations of where they would be just within like a three, four month window of being on the course. Uh, and I want you to have that experience too. So if you're unsure, you know, message me on Instagram or email. It's all just at Dr. Will O'Connor uh, or jump on the link in the bio and sign up uh, and I'll meet you there. I'll be, I'll be the one signing you up, rolling you through the onboarding process, getting your training plan set up. Because this is what I want to help with. This running slow to get fast concept. Uh, you've heard it here before. Maybe you're new. I am really 
big on developing specificity within the aerobic system. So what most runners are doing out there, you know, you're doing a, a weekly mix bag of some kind of ambiguous intensity that you call speed work. Everyone has a different meaning for it. You know, is that 20 second sprints on like massive recovery or is that five by one mile threshold intervals? It's all speed, but what does it mean and how do you expect it to make your fast you faster? Because I can you just answer this for me, really? Can you run a 1K faster than your average pace for a 5K? Yes, I can go do a 1K time trial and I can, you know, I can do like a 240 something. Um, but I can't run 5K under three minutes yet. Uh, average pace under three minutes per K. So I can run a 1K faster than I run a 5K. Yep. Can I run my 5K faster than I run a marathon? Yeah, way faster. My average pace for 5K is way faster than my average pace for a marathon. So then why do we think that we need to get faster to run a faster marathon or to run a faster half marathon? You can already run fast. If you can already run a 5K, you know, faster than you can run, you can sustain for a marathon, speed isn't your limiting factor. Your limiting factor is fitness. That is your ability to maintain the speed for the duration of a half marathon, marathon, ultra marathon. And I'll tell you what I've told many clients before. It's the potential that you're unfit. Aerobically fit, that is. Like, sure, you're a massively fit person. But in terms of an aerobic base fitness, so your ability to generate energy, or at least utilize, uh, can generate a usable form of energy in adazine triphosphate from fats and oxygen, so really highly efficient, almost unlimited fuel sources, is limited. Your aerobic system, the ability to do that, is limited. So yes, yeah, you might be able to run 90 minutes or 20 Ks or something in the weekend, like pretty hard and you can smash out a really good interval set but then I bet when you get to like a half marathon or a marathon that you're racing around the same speed as your long runs or sometimes you're even going a bit slower it's probably because you're not running slow enough not that you're running too slow so since remember your aerobic system contributes 98 percent of the energy required to sustain an output for 60 minutes or longer, your most significant potential comes in developing that aerobic system more than it is your speed. So your aerobic system is the engine that powers endurance exercise. Just think of aerobic system, endurance exercise. Two go hand in hand. They're fundamentally linked. So aerobic respiration occurs within the mitochondria. We, you know, you we must remember the powerhouse of the cell from uh, whatever year thirteen biology. So the more mitochondria you have, the more energy you can utilize for muscular contractions, and so you can move faster for the same effort. You can become a more efficient, more economical runner. So that is more mitochondria. You have a larger engine, so you can just pump more energy through more fats, more oxygen, and you can run faster. So that is why you, I love to utilize heart rate and zone two running because it's just the optimal zone for maximizing the, your aerobic capacity. And what you can see is you'll start to, over time, run faster and faster and be able to run up hills where you had to previously walk or jog without your heart rate increasing. And that is what we at fundamentally trying to achieve and becoming a better runner. What we want to be able to do is exert more muscular force without entering into uh, aerobic or glycolytic dependent metabolic state. So it's like anaerobic or carbohydrate heavy dominant. So when your aerobic capacity is low, so your base fitness is low, your muscular, muscular contraction level is quite low. 
in terms of what you can, how much muscular force, how fast you can run aerobically. So therefore, anytime you slightly increase your muscular contractile level, your force output, your running speed, like running up a hill, right? Your heart rate quickly increases. So if you're using heart rate, you're like, oh, why does my heart rate go up every time I go up hill when I'm trying to do this bloody zone two training? You should listen back to the heart rate episode that I, I've done. But your heart rate will, will increase. It needs to rapidly uh, supply more, more fuel and remove the excess carbon dioxide from the anaerobic metabolism that you've had to engage in in order to run up the hill when you previous, you know, because your aerobic capacity is not high enough to sustain like slight inclines or in, increases in your force output. So that anaerobic respiration where you've had to rapidly and quickly increase your energetic output and so you've had to engage in an anaerobic uh, energy system that's drawing on your stored glycogen, your, your so glycolysis, your stored carbohydrate, not only does it generate lactate, you know, which we know is bad, generates acidity, um, so an acidic muscular environment, which is not great. It's a stinging, burning sensation you feel in your legs. But it happens, that happens. The reason it's so fast and rapid and we use the anaerobic system as our high-octane fuel is that it occurs outside of the mitochondria. Therefore, when you're running in that gray zone that's slightly too hard and you keep pushing up the hills and allowing your heart rate to increase on every single run to make sure you get a good Strava upload or you just want to hang with the group, a lot of, not a lot, but, you know, what is allowing you to run slightly fast and potentially think that you're gaining fitness or your your Strava uploads are looking good is a recruitment of the anaerobic system occurring outside of the mitochondria. Therefore, when you're running this, you know, this slightly too hard pace, that top zone two into zone three, every run, you're not training for maximal mitochondrial development and you're not building fitness because that increase in muscular contractile activity, that, that increase in running pace and force output is coming from a supplemental energetic input from the anaerobic system outside of the mitochondria, not inside. And that is the gray zone. That's what I that's one of the definitions of what I consider the gray zone. So what I want you to do, okay, your one week challenge now is to not run any faster than zone two for a whole week, seven days more, 10 days, I'd love it, two weeks, even better. So I don't care if you have to walk up the hills or you have to jog at the back of the pack, you know, the slower group on your club run. I want to teach you that running slower, not faster, can benefit your running by targeting the exact physiological components needed to become a faster runner, reduce the systemic stress that you get from that acidic environment and training too hard too often so that your body can feel great, you can feel good and enjoy running more and make progress. So I know you're probably like, oh, cool, zone two. What is my zone two? Listen back to some of my episodes, but for now, pretty much you can just use use whatever system you know you've been given on your watch, um, whatever you know percentage of maximal heart rate, um, the calculators I have on my website, whatever Strava is giving you, whatever it is, it's probably good enough that I want you to be at like the bottom of zone two for one week, not even get close to zone three, okay? So whatever calculator you're using, whatever numbers are automatically generated, it's gonna be enough to slow you down, all right? So on your on your uploads, I don't wanna see zone three. I don't wanna see any percentage time in zone three, all right? So that's the challenge, all right? Run slower, because you're not running too slow. You're probably running too fast, all right? And then if you're wanting direction and you're running, this is great, place to start, get steal my formula for running mind-blowing PBs and check out that course pre-Christmas 2022. If you're listening after that, so I'll check it out. It'll still be there. Course will still be there, but maybe the deal won't be as good. All right, guys, until next time, happy running. I'll see you out there. Hey teams, thanks for listening. If you're looking to get more tips, tricks and advice from me, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Dr. Will O'Connor and share 
like, review, give some stars for the episode. It really helps me get the word out and I hugely appreciate it. If you do so, give me a tag on Instagram and I'll be sure to share you my stories and reach out via the DMs. All right, till next time, guys. Have a good one.